I'm Jack from Ocean Independence. Today we're on board the 38m Castagnola Angra 2. You may have seen some pictures and videos online, but nothing compares to the quality and the size on board. Today I'm going to bring you as close as I can to that. Jump on. So as we come up the passerelle, you're really welcomed immediately into the family feel that Angra 2 exudes, if you will. And also what's really important to note is that when you're downstairs on the bathing platform, you have your very easy access to the water. But Angra 2 also has a draft of less than one meter, which means that you can come as close to the shore as possible, giving you easy access to the water and also that feeling that you're really on board the whole time. While we're here in the cockpit, you see there's this beautiful walk around just behind the sofa. You have these two tables that can interconnect to make one big table for all of the guests on board. Of course, we have the service bar with ice maker and fridge and some storage over on the port side. Let's head into the salon. So the history of Angra 2 is, is really fascinating. The owner had Years and years ago, he had a 32 meter Castagnola from the same shipyard and had an amazing time aboard and loved every aspect of it, only it wasn't really enough space. So him, the original captain, who is still the captain on board today, the engineer, who is still the engineer on board today, the three of them started designing this custom project with the shipyard. And the philosophy was all about space, family time on board, using all of their experience over the years and years together, uh, as well as with, with the shipyard, to create what we see here today in, in Angra 2. So the Castagnola shipyard are incredibly well known for especially their woodwork. Everything is handmade, handcrafted, proper traditional craftsmanship. And we see that throughout all of the wooden floorings, the detail that we have here in the drawers, the different grains and colours of wood, um, and we see that around the top as well. Also what's interesting of a yacht this size and this length is the space, is the height, is the volume on board. I'm 175 tall and I can't touch the ceiling. We're well over two metres here, which just means that the comfort we have, the feeling of space and volume is incomparable to anything else of this length. We'll head forwards, we'll head down the corridor towards the, the master stateroom, but as we go past, we come past the indoor dining. This obviously isn't used much, only in really inclement weather. And then as we go forward, we also have access to the gym down here. The gym itself is something one wouldn't normally find on a yacht of 38 meters in length. It is a proper, genuine space with a treadmill, with a, with a weights, a pulley machine, uh, with a television. So it's really unusual to have a gym of this size in a yacht of 38 meters. So we'll head forwards. As we go down the corridor, we'll find the nanny cabin on the starboard side here. Space for one, either nanny or a child, very comfortably. And then into the master. Coming through into the master stateroom, we continue that philosophy of the family feel, the warmth, the coziness, the woods, the Castagnola built craftsmanship. In terms of spaces, we've got this incredible sized master stateroom. You have his and hers bathrooms in quite beautiful size, very, very, very comfortable. And the big walk-in dressing room over on the port side here. The headroom throughout, as we felt in the salon and walking through, is just amazing. The attention to detail in terms of the television, the sound system is perfect, really combining the, the technology of the modern day super yacht with the comfort that one should feel at home. If we then follow through, back through the corridor, we can head down to the four guest staterooms. We have two doubles and two twins down there, complemented of course by the, the nanny cabin, children's cabin up here on the main deck. And those four staterooms have 
generous space for, for each of the guests as they come on board. There's not one that's, that, that feels small, which is very surprising in terms of a yacht this size. So as we come back over to port side, we have the galley where they have six fridge freezers. They're interchangeable so that depending on the trip, depending on the provisions, you can have a mix of fridges or freezers, however you like. We have all mealy equipment, two ovens, stove tops, and that pushes through into the pantry where you can prepare all of the food for service before it goes out uh, to the guests. Heading straight down via the, the crew access, we have uh, crew cabins for six crew, split between four cabins. So they have comfortable space, they have generous crew mess for the six on board. You could expand that if you wanted to, to seven crew, just giving that extra level of service if you want. And they have direct access aft through to the garage and the engine room, perfect for, for keeping out of the way of guests, giving absolute discretion to all of the guests. So if we head back up this way towards the aft or the midships, we head up to the bridge just up here. Coming up to the bridge now, we can see the primary control station for Angra 2. You have control over the three MTU engines, all of which are 2000 horsepower, 2000 series engines as well, and they're connected to Kamiwa water jets. The two wing engines, which are the primary engines that the captain uses, have 1,800 hours each, and the central engine has 1,400 hours which is used very much as a, as a booster. So at those speeds, the cruise speed is really 23 knots, up to a maximum of 28 knots underway. Also really useful to know is that when we're at anchor, we have gyro stabilizers. Those keep running while the boat's stationary and really keep her settled in the water so that any wash coming past keeps her stable. We also see in the space, I suppose, the conning station, so the captain's very much comfortable while he's on watch. We have the day bed, so guests can come down here and spend some time with the captain while the boat's underway. And also the owner's office aft, which he uses as a real workspace uh, while, while away on holiday. We all need to do it sometimes. We'll then head up to the sun deck and see the space up there. So as we come up from the bridge, we come past the secondary helm station where the captain can maneuver. He has great visibility from up here. And of course he gets some breeze as going along. What we can also see as we look up and over the bow is the beautiful, intimate dining area set up at the moment for six, possibly eight guests. And that's where the family currently spend an awful lot of time on board. Back up here on the sun deck, we have these fantastic sun pads, sunbathing area, which is naturally incredibly important on board. With the table set up for eight today, the stews have done a lovely job presenting that really as, as you would expect to have her. And again, that's serviced by the bar over this side with fridge, ice maker, and storage for all of your drinks and snacks on board. Last but not least, of course, we have a lovely space back here. We can be flexible with that. Also with loose furniture if we wish. We're shaded under the bimini. And there's a second bimini that extends aft and gives shade to this table setting at the back. And just as with below, we can connect these two tables together and have the dining set up or lunch set up at the aft of the boat there. So that really wraps up our tour of Angra 2 today. I'm Jack, my contact details will be in the description below. Please like, subscribe, and uh, we hope to see you in the next video soon.